Hello and welcome to this episode of the Live On Purpose show with me, Corinne Worsley, and today a very special guest, Adele Wimsett from Harmonize You. Now, Adele and I met a few years ago at a women's networking event, and I fully believe that it was one of those we were meant to meet kind of occurrences. Um, We've remained connected ever since, and Adele just goes from strength to strength in the work that she does. We initially connected around doTERRA oils, which I am a little bit obsessed with, um, and I use them as my natural medicine cabinet. Um, So if you don't know anything about doTERRA oils, definitely start, go and have a look at them. And then Adele's work has progressed on from from that. She no longer just, just deals in doTERRA oils. She is all about empowering women and in particular, empowering um, women's well-being so she she delivers holistic therapies in her own treatment room Um, she teaches relaxation techniques she leads women's circles and she also educates people around women's menstrual cycles and that is what we are going to focus on in today's episode now this is something that I really only started learning about a few years ago because I had to because my body basically was throwing its toys out of the pram because I had not been treating it well. And so I've learned a little bit about my cycle and tracking my cycle and the different phases. But Adele today in this episode is going to educate us even further. And I am certainly going to go away and dive deeper into the videos that she has available on this topic um, and really start to get even deeper into aligning with my cycle. Anyway, I know this is going to be so, so valuable for you. It's a juicy, juicy episode, so I won't bore you any longer with my waffle. I will allow you to dive in and do just know that if you go to the show notes of the podcast or wherever I've posted this, um, you will find in, in the blurb all of Adele's details so that you can get in touch with her and that you can take advantage of the free resources that she offers. So without further ado, here's the episode. Enjoy. Hello everyone and welcome to this episode of the Live On Purpose podcast. I am delighted today to be talking to Adele Wimsett from Harmonize You. Uh, Welcome Adele to the podcast. Hi, thank you for having me. My absolute pleasure. This is the second time we've talked together on a podcast, so I'm really pleased to, to have you talking to us today. And we're going to be focusing on monthly cycles, women's monthly cycles. But before we dive into that, um, I'll let you introduce yourself and what you do and how you came to be doing what it is that you're doing now. Thank you. So um, yeah, I'm a women's health practitioner, um, which means that I work specifically with women to empower them to feel good, really, um, in various ways. So I have a little practice where um, I offer actually specific treatments very tailored to women. Um, But I also do menstrual cycle coaching. So I'm a cyclical living mentor where I help women to understand the nature of their physiology and their being to live, harness its power to live in alignment with our biology. Um, But I was only doing that up until I wasn't doing that up until a few years ago. Prior to that, I'd spent um, 20 years working in youth justice where I specialised in female offending and worked with a lot of women around abuse and trauma. So I've always sort of had this, this feminist underpinning yeah. in my value base and wanting to work with women to empower them, really. So when I became a mama um, and the long hours and various factors about how, the, how my work had changed, my value base wasn't congruent with that type, what the organisation was wanting anymore. Um, and I just had to live, I knew I had to live in alignment. So I took a big leap of faith, I took a deep breath, strapped myself in, handed in my notice and set on my own business. And thankfully, it's, it's all gone well and I absolutely love it. But then, yeah, that's been my sort of common thread is yeah. working with women. Yeah, and there's a, already a dose of inspiration for, for women right there. It's like you say, living in alignment is, it's easier said than done. That's it for really sure. Is. Um, uh, it's all too easy to stick with with what we we know um, instead of like you say taking that leap and um, and doing what feels right for us. So yeah, um, I, I just knew I knew if I stayed, I'd get ill, you know, and yeah. I wasn't prepared to do that. And you know, it wasn't an overnight journey; it, it took time. Um, 
I should get my hubby on board. Um, but you know, we we have that yeah. that illusion of the safety of the salary and the pension, you know. And I think particularly the times that we're living now, nothing's secure, you know. Yeah. Yeah, absolutely. It's definitely the 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 one employer is um as being safe is an absolute illusion. Um yeah, that's that's a topic for another, another day. Po- another podcast, another another podcast episode. <laughs> um so as you mentioned, you, you work with women around their, their monthly cycles. Um, so I, I first came to this work probably a few years ago when I did go through my own experience of burnout and um, just started investigating more about how my body worked and worked with functional medicine practitioners really who were able to say, mm, the reason for a lot of this is because your hormones are knackered. Um, so yeah, it'd be really, really great if you could just give us like an overview of, of what are those phases within a a woman's monthly menstrual cycle, and then we'll kind of dive a little bit more deeply into that. Yeah, absolutely. And it's just interesting there just to pick up that quite often when we start talking about hormones, we think straight away to our reproductive hormones, our progesterone, our estrogen. Mm. Actually, it's important to remember that our hormones are a system. It's our endocrine system. And if they start going out, you know, this all begins in the brain. When we start going, those things start going out of balance, it affects everything else in that system. So, you know, we're talking about adrenaline and cortisol. We're talking about our sleep hormones, we're talking about our, our me- metabolic hormones all these different things that are happening in the body um are this really beautiful system that works perfectly when we live in um as our ancestors did you know but we just don't live in that we're constantly stuck in this state of fight or flight that we've become completely desensitized to you know so many women that i work with said to me i don't actually feel stressed and then when i start unpicking that with them there's a huge number of stresses there we've just become desensitized to it which I believe is one of the reasons we're so tired and burnt out yeah. and exhausted. Yeah, um, 100%. Yeah. So, yeah, I just thought that was um, important. But I think probably taking it back to basics, and I'm not going to give you know, the boring biology lesson here, but from quite a young age, we know that we are different. Boys and girls are different. Yet somehow, as we live in our sort of patriarchal culture and corporate-driven world, we forget this. And what happens is, we have a completely different um, hormone system to men okay so men men work on a 24-hour cycle with their hormone system so from when they hit puberty pretty much until they die they have this loop of testosterone on a 24-hour cycle that doesn't really fluctuate however for women if you look at a chart for a women's hormone cycle, there are peaks and troughs of all different things going on roughly on a 28 day period. So a normal cycle is 25 to 35 days for most women, but an average is 28. And during that cycle, you've got different hormones doing different things to the body. Now, we know that um, a hormone that we have a synthetic replacement for a hormone will do just one thing that thing that we want it to do in the body but actually another whole a natural hormone in the body has multiple purposes okay they're so, so complex they have play all these different roles in the body and when we start to play around with that we we affect all these that the hormones affect our cognitive ability our digestive process, our gut microbiome, our skin elasticity, how hot we are, um, all these, obviously our reproductive ability are all responsible because of these hormones. And when we aren't we know our levels of inflammation, they all change throughout the month, yet the way we live does not, okay? So as a man does this cycle 24 hours a day, we fluctuate and change throughout our life, but but also not just in a 28 day period, but in a month, a seasonal period of our life. So we have what I refer to as our maiden phase so from 20 to 30, then 30 to 40 is usually our mother phase, but that, does, that doesn't mean us bearing children. That's just around the, t- the phase that we tend to give more of ourselves. And then we have what I call the enchantress phase, which is our perimenopausal phase. And then the wise woman crone phase, which is when we've gone through our menopause. So we have these really distinct sort of quite biological phases 
in our lives as women. And I apply that to the four cycles of the menstrual cycle. Okay, so we have what is called the follicular phase. This is our pre ovulation phase. And this is usually day seven to 10 in our cycle. And that then leads us into our ovulation phase which I call the mother phase. So that phase, the pre-ovulation, I call the maiden phase. Then we go into our, because it just helps to conceptualize what I mean by this. That's like yeah. our, our maiden phase is like our inner spring. And then we go to our, our mother phase, which is our ovulation. And then we go, when we transition through that and our hormones decline, so our estrogen has reached a peak when we have re-ovulate and release an egg, then it begins to decline and progesterone, drain, this new hormone increases. So we have our premenstrual phase, and then we go into our enchantress phase and all of our, our crane phase, sorry, where all of our hormones drop off, okay? And we feel differently throughout the phases, yet we are taught to live in a linear, action-based way like men do, because that is their cycle. So men can go, 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 do, 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 live, this, eat the same kind of food, exercise in the same kind of way, and that works for them. Yet we are conditioned to live like that, even though it's completely out of alignment with our physiology and our biology. And the impact of this is burnout and exhaustion and anxiety and mood imbalances and digestive issues because we're not living the way we're designed to live. Does that make sense? Uh, yeah, yeah, that makes complete sense. Um, like you say, the yeah, the cyclical nature, and it, we are even if even if we're not in corporate necessarily, we're still go go go. Um, Absolutely. And and like you say, the the stresses that we're under, we've kind of just become accustomed to feeling ever so slightly stressed all the time, to the point that we don't realise that we actually are stressed. I've I've been doing a lot of work with this myself, um, with the nervous system, and and that ultimately having those stress hormones constantly on the go to into the burnout trap yeah so being in the our, our central nervous system is inextricably linked to our endocrine system so mm. when we're wired when we're stressed the signals to the body are don't digest your food don't produce your happy chemicals yeah. don't you know, have your reproductive hormones being produced, take all the skin, all the blood to the skin so we're not detoxing and cleansing properly. Now that's fine if that's momentary. Mm. But when we're living like that all the time, we start, the body can only maintain that for so long. And then it starts to present as symptoms in the body. Yeah, yeah. And I don't know whether it's worth noting here as well, this applies whether you have a womb or not, whether you're using synthetic mm. hormones to sort of to manage your cycle, it doesn't matter. As a woman, our natural way of being is to ebb and to flow throughout the month. Yeah, yeah, and uh, yeah, that's a uh, that's quite a challenge for for those of us who yeah who who've become accustomed to just going and needing to just go in order to keep up with everything, work, life. Um, but you're going to have so, some tools at the end of there. Yeah, too. exactly. That's what I was going to, I was going to go into. So in, in the different phases then, um, let's start talking about kind of almost how we can honor each phase and also what each phase in what, what we're ideally suited to be doing, um, or being, uh, within each phase of our cycle so that we can people can start to get an idea of how they can start using this and doing things differently. I could talk about this all day. Um, I actually have programs to teach them in this and if somebody wants some deeper information on this I'm really happy to share that. I've got lots on my Vimeo channel but basically when we can, we, it, the way that we our cognitive ability, the way that we communicate, um, the way that we work, the way that we socialize, the way that we eat, the way that we move, all these things vary. Even the types of clothes that you will be intuitively drawn to wear will change throughout your cycle. And once you begin to monitor this stuff, the biggest consistency that women say to me when I finish working with them is like, why do I only know this stuff now? Why am I not taught this stuff at school? Um, so I'm really passionate about us um, empowering women with this knowledge and rippling this out. 
Um, so each phase I could probably talk to you for hours about, but just in a nutshell, our maiden or pre-ovulation phase, this is the phase that we're probably most in our masculine. This is a really good time. This is where we get our post-it notes out. We want to write to-do lists. We're in action. Um, it's a really good time to set health goals or new intentions at this time. So really we have a lot of clarity. Um, it's quite an external way of being. So we're outward. We're good at communicating. Um, we have a really like the if if and remember this is a cycle this isn't a line of being if, if we have rested properly during our menstruation during our bleed then this is where we have our rocket fuel okay but each phase needs to be honored by each one so what i do is i teach women we look at a woman's life and we we put in her lifestyle to different phases but in this time generally is a really good time to you know you can get away with work in the long hours you can get away with skipping the lunch breaks, the kind of movement you want to be doing um, is your cardio type stuff. So running, you know, having that, you've got much more stamina in this time and your recovery is a lot quicker. And then we move into our ovulation phase, whereby it's really good to do training like HIIT training, strength training, maybe some really like power flow yoga. Um, so this is a really good time to connect with people, to network with people, to collaborate to ask for a pay rise, to ask for feedback. We're much less sensitive to other people's opinions during this time. Um, so it's a really good time to have difficult conversations because we, we tend to see the broader context. We don't get quite so triggered by people in this phase. Um, it's a really good time to have really quality um, experiences with your loved ones because then you know one of the biggest things we carry as women is guilt right you know whatever that is we've got this guilt we're not good enough we're not doing enough yeah. whatever that is and actually this is a time wh when we come on to our other phases where we want to be quieter and retreat so we appease we, we alleviate the guilt of that phase we really get into people you know this is to go and see the, the people that really grate on you you know the people you know that maybe family members that you kind of go oh i don't want to this is the time to do that because you've got the energy and the capacity for that um really lovely time to do team building type exercises all of the appraisals um for your work and and to work in this way having the big meetings uh, and just you know you're much more confident in yourself and here you are you've got much more positive self-talk and then we transition into our next phase, which I call the enchantress, our premenstrual phase. And I describe this as a bit of a Jacqueline Hyde phase because at the beginning of this phase, all our hormones are high, right? They're waiting for this egg to come along and implant. And when it doesn't, it then our hormones begin to decline. So at the start of this phase, we can feel quite energized. We can still feel quite positive. So we can carry on doing that more intense exercise. But then as we begin to decline, our body is going to feel more tired. Um, there's gonna, we're going to find it harder to recover from exercise. Um, we need to find time to slow down. So we need to take lunch breaks. We, what I would suggest is in your, your ovulation phase, your mother phase, you batch cook. Okay, so make up a load of food that you like to eat, stick it in the freezer. Because as your energy declines, you've, you're going to thank yourself for it. I like to have a load of protein balls in the fridge that I can just grab if I need a sugar hit or, you know, some energy. Having all that stuff there so you don't have to worry about doing it when you're in it. And you really need to, you know, try. I like to teach my clients to do things that I call resets. So attaching a habit to a habit is a much more easier way to ingrain something. So maybe every time you have a drink, do a reset. And a reset to me is even if it's just one minute of breath work, I'm an essential oils addict. So get a, a calming <laughs> essential oil into that and just sitting for a minute and breathe. You can do this while the kettle boils. You can do this while you're on a call at work, just sitting and resetting your system because what you're doing in that moment is telling your brain, I am safe. OK, I'm calm. So it just slows down and it does all the things it needs to do to keep our body well. So it's really important if you can incorporate these things during this phase, you can conserve some of your energy that will stop you feeling quite so depleted. And then we try. It's usually the phase as well where if we have things that we're not addressing in our life, 
they're going to come up to the surface, okay? And to stop that being a massive eruptive row, just try and take some time to journal or to reflect on that and wait until your other phases, maybe like your maiden and your mother, to have the conversations, to put them into action. Don't make big decisions in this phase. And then we go into our crone phase, which is our bleed. And this is a time to be still as much as we can. Now, I'm not suggesting you go into bed and just lay there for a week until you're done. It is just about, you know, don't arrange to see your friends in this time. You know, we love our friends and we don't want to look in the diary and go, oh, no, why have I put that in? Okay, we, they deserve the best of us. So save it for different phases. In this phase at work, you might want to be, you know, doing your critical analysis of things, um, but it, doing quite administrative things, things that don't require your external people self. Let this be the, the reflective stage. What's working well? What isn't working well? What needs to change? What no longer serves you? Do that reflective practice about how you're operating and what's working. Um, but yeah, like I say, try and be really still as much as you can to slow down. Um, so when we're in that crane phase, if we can find the time to be still, guilt-free, that's where our rocket fuel comes from. But what happens is because of how we live, you know, I know I'm creating images of Julie mm -hmm. Andrews running through the hills singing during her mother phase. Most women who listen to this probably go, well, I didn't feel like that in those phases. But that's because we have spent years and decades not listening to what our body needs. So she's tired, okay? Yeah. She's exhausted, she's depleted, she's burnt out. You know, so I see so many women who have a whole list of symptoms. The doctors have had done all the tests and said, there's nothing wrong with you. And actually she's, we're exhausted. You know, most, when I, it's very rare I meet a woman who is full of vitality, feeling really good, sleeping really well, got no mood imbalances. And that's because we haven't harnessed this power. So the way I tend to work with women is to say, for a month, let's pretend you're in your period the whole time. We need to go right back to that, slowing it down and being still and then begin to build on that in a gentle way. Mm -hmm. The good news is it doesn't take the body... It, the body recovers a lot quicker than it took for it to get into that space. It wants to work in this way. It wants to live in this way. Does that make yeah. sense? It does. Absolutely. Yeah. So much, so much in there. Um, yeah. I think it's like you say, to begin with, I certainly found this, um, you know, I first, I, I would have said, oh, I don't work in that way. Um, but it was because my body, because I've reached that burnout level. And like you say, all the hormones are connected. So my thyroid hormones are all over the place and my stress hormones. And so therefore were my, my sex hormones as well. So I used to get to like, like day 12 or 13, because my cycle is about normally 26 days, but it can be anything from 23 to 28. And I would feel like the world was going to end. And that was because my progesterone was not, it was not kicking in like it should do at that point. Um, and, and yeah, so it, it took, took a while, but then I really started to be able to notice like the, the patterns kind of coming through um and and yeah once you do start to track it you will start to recognize it's really fascinating what you say because i'm premenstrual at the moment so i'm day 24 today um and yeah i think it was probably saturday friday or saturday i was like oh, i feel amazing i've got so much energy um and then by sunday when i was i was batch cooking for, for the rest of the week but i was like oh, freaking want to do this batch cooking I hate it um but I knew I needed to do it because you know the week ahead was coming um and yeah I will I quite often in premenstrual phase will be very much like do not mess with me like <laughs> um in that it's phase our, as well our truth filters off in that yeah. phase it is you know and when you liken that to our premenstrual phase our, our perimenopausal phase in our life which is the same mm. thing that is where we can really step into our power you know that yeah. period of our life that season of a woman's life gets really bad press you know because of how we treat women of mm. that age but actually it can be a really empowered time you know we yeah. are, we're no longer going to expend our energy on the relationships that deplete us and exhaust us and are toxic you know, it's like, it's my time now. You may have children that have grown up to be a bit more older, so you may have more time to yourself. 
it would hopefully be a time where you've got a bit more disposable income, some more choice, you know, and that can actually be a great time, but we don't honour that season in that way in our in our culture. Yeah. yeah. I just I think just like like you, I just turned 40, uh, say just, it was a few months ago. But um, yeah, our boundaries are definitely getting better. I'm feeling mm-hmm. more secure in myself. Mm-hmm. Um, and, you know, you know it's, it's a completely different thing from the 30s. Um, 40s and, uh, yeah. <laughs> yeah, I'm like, I prefer this. This is much better. Um, but yeah, it's fascinating as well about the, the rest in the, in, the, um, in the crone phase, in the, the menstrual mm-hmm. phase. And this is, I, I, I tend to not work out on the first few days of my cycle I will gauge it by like am I feeling all right and then I I will do a a workout or some yoga on say day three but never like day one day two just don't even don't even go there napping is your exercise when you're bleeding you know if you want to do something on the lead up to something like yin yoga going for a nice walk lovely but when you're bleeding just let your body bleed you know the woman's body from an evolutionary perspective is designed to procreate you know even our immunity drops when Mm -hmm. we're bleeding because everything is going around that our area of procreation so you know don't push it past that that's where the energy is going and if you're trying to get it out into your arms and your legs, you're taking it away from there. Um, yeah. But that is not to say, please don't think I'm saying it, that it's an easy thing to be still because it's not, you know, as, as we honor busyness, that's what we value. We value, I, my language around this would be, we value the masculine qualities of endless productivity, being um, competitive, success is getting to the top, at no, you know, no matter what, that power. And actually that's not, we don't honor the feminine values in the same way of collaboration, of intuition, of reflection, those kind of things, or, or emotions, they don't get honored. So it's really difficult. We're conditioned to think that if we stop and take a break, yeah. that we're doing, we're lazy. Mm. You know, we could be, you know, so many women have this relentless white noise of their never ending to do list. We're never going to finish that list. So, you know, taking a break from it. But what I find eases women into being able to take a break is, look, if you do that, you can do twice as much in your other phases. Rather than pushing through, always feeling like you're climbing up a mountain, tired and exhausted, just stop, you know, honor that for a bit. And then you can get back into feeling good. You can get back into having the energy to power through all the to-do lists. But you'll do it and enjoy it. You'll get satisfaction from it rather than it feeling like endless chores yeah yeah it's interesting I guess my challenge as as with many other women will be around like the corporate corporate life so like my day one last month I thought you know what I'm just gonna have I might even take a half day today I'm just gonna have an easy day and it ended up being a nine hour day um because stuff just had to be done Mm. on that day because in in corporate land there is no it's not cyclical it's go 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 a bit more go a bit more um so I guess there is definitely an element as I was saying to you before like my challenge is to start speaking up about my cycle with my colleagues and I do with with one of my male colleagues and he actually said to me I really appreciate that you talk about this nobody else does Mm. and you know I've had these conversations with my wife etc and it's really important that, that women you know share this and voice this mm. um so that's one of my challenges is about speaking about that and uh, about then honoring as far as I can as regards meetings and and just how I go about my day I think um and not expecting like uber productivity on those days um is it okay yeah there's the occasional meeting that I'm not going to be able to skip but I can then around that just set my own expectation other people's expectation that for these three four days I'm not going to be uber productive at all but then like you say when it comes into the other phases you can really maximize the fact that you have taken care of yourself and respected um, what you needed during that phase and I think you know the the reality is most of us are probably not going to feel comfortable to go and have a conversation with our boss 
about our period you know especially if it's a male we have been conditioned to think that we'll be seen as weak as less capable if we start to have the, that dialogue in, within a corporate space but it's changing I am definitely seeing the beginnings of a shift and it, so if you are that person that's like there's no way I can go and have this conversation use as much as you can the, the bits you do have control over of your diary you control that. So for example, when you're in your pre-ovulation phase, you might want to protect some time to do um, some training or some learning in that time. You might want to research a particular area. You might want to plan your month ahead and write your to-do list and get your, you know, really clear on what your vision is for the month ahead. And then when you go into ovulation, that's where you're communicating. You know, you want to maybe go and pitch your ideas to your boss. You can be really um seen in this time and having those important conversations so they're all things you don't necessarily need someone else to give you the green light to do um, when you maybe go into a pre-menstrual phase you want to start getting organized because you might not you know you know you might not going to be quite so on yeah. in, in the next couple of weeks and start to look at yourself a bit you know what are my values here what's motivating me and celebrating yourself in this time because you can go you know like you said we can go a bit low in this time and inward and actually when we're celebrating ourselves you go actually I'm doing all right um and then when you go into into your menstrual just have you know what can you do to say I'm taking this lunch break today I'm not having social events after work I'm not going to drink in this space because that will deplete me even more so they're all things you're in control of whether you you need someone else's permission to acknowledge your cycle or not yeah exactly it's, it's starting isn't it with control what you can control stop worrying about all the other bits and bobs that you absolutely yeah. can't control and like you say if you don't feel you're quite ready or you're not the um the the type to go and have that conversation with it with a boss even sometimes i think the women that i work with would mm. like be astonished if i mentioned my cycle on a call and almost yeah. be a bit like you shouldn't be talking about that yeah and i'm like why not Hey, yeah. how is it different than somebody yeah. having a headache or yeah. a cold Absolutely. it's not and actually it happens on a monthly basis um you know and us women we just sit you know sit there with the cramps and you know wishing we could just be lying on a bed trying to mm -hmm. you know trying to be productive and normal on a meeting um so yeah there, there are ways that we can start and we have to start from from the inside i think I was having this conversation on the last podcast I did, um, which was, you know, men know that we have periods like they unless they're really. Secret. Yeah, it's not a secret, but like the way that certainly I used to incorporate it's like smuggle a tampon up my sleeve yeah. to go to the toilet, yeah. like or, you know, take every, you know, they'd always know it was on my cycle because I'd be taking my handbag with me to the toilets or yeah. whatever. Um, like, oh, no, it's got we got to stop with that because this is how things are going to change is if we start bringing it more to the surface I, f I find it I think there's been an increase in articles in sort of mainstream media about the fact wow well, women you no longer need to bleed you no longer need to have a period you can just take a hormone the whole time and I'm like no so many women are going to end up more exhausted and more burnt out with yeah. just suppressing the way our body yeah. works absolutely we're doing that listening to some some Caroline Mace stuff at the moment and she talks about a lot of the um the things that we see occurring in women's health now like the increase in cancers and the mm. increase in issues around fertility and she's like this is not a surprise based on what we're doing well one we're going against our, our natural cycles and two we are putting synthetic hormones in our bodies yeah. and like you say ah, oh, today this month I won't have a bleed next yeah. month you know or oh, maybe i won't bother having a bleed either um, and i think it's yeah. it's really important that we know where because people women often say to me oh i'm not no longer taking hormones um but my period's so much worse than when i was on the pill and it's, when you're on the pill you are not having a period you are having a withdrawal from a medication that's what you're having it's not your period so don't if you come off of it just don't um judge your periods in that way and you know mm -hmm. don't get me wrong I think contraceptive has been incredible for women you know it, it has been so it created so much empowerment and got us into the workplace it's allowed us to be in control of how many children we have it's been amazing but my issue with it is that we don't 
make informed decisions about it. We're literally written a prescription mm-hmm. and told, there you go, they're handed out like Smarties and we don't yeah. look at the risk factors around them to be able to make a proper informed decision of the long-term implications that can yeah. occur for some women. So that that's the place that I come from with yeah. that is that, you know, I'd really encourage women to explore that for themselves. Yeah, and I certainly found I, I never really got along with any pill. Like one of them would make me like puff up like a, a puffer fish. Mm. Another one would do something else to me. And I just decided I just I'm not going to put those things in my body. It was on my body. It was like, I do not want that stuff. But the other thing I find around my cycle, just, you know, mentioning about um, like the severity of symptoms, the cleaner I'm eating and the the more I'm exercising taking really good care of my body the the lesser my symptoms become Mm. and also I guess that that tied into that is the fact that I'm also taking just taking generally better care of myself with meditation Mm. and sleep and all of these things they tie in together and they do actually they can actually radically change your experience of your bleed as well And, th- and that's what I say to, to women that I'm working with is like, this isn't about going to go and live in a cave and drink organic green juice for the rest of your life. Like, we live in a toxic world. OK, mm. we live, we have lots. It is there. So we have to balance that out and reduce the risks of that, because these chemicals coming in are called xenoestrogens. And what they do is they attach to our hormone receptor sites, which means our beautiful hormones can't get on there to send the messages to the rest of the body to do what it needs to do. So when the less xenoestrogens we're using, the better. For example, you know, how many women get perfume and spray it on their lymph nodes at least twice a day, every single day? And we don't question that. Yet they're carcinogenic, toxic chemicals that we're putting there. And this has an impact then on our liver, which is imperative to our hormone health. So when our liver's not working properly, it affects how our body, many things, but how our body's able to process hormones. And we end up with this imbalance. So having a cleaner, in inverted commas, lifestyle means that our liver's able to process these things better as well. You know, they're not getting attached to the body. So it's able to do, the body always wants to do what it's meant to do. Yes, it's always trying to get back to homeostasis, this state of balance where everything's flowing. And we just like to make it a bit harder for it sometimes, you know? So the more we live like this, the body will just balance itself out, but it takes time and we can do it step by step, you know? It's little, yeah. even just changing to organic tampons and organic pads, you know, that we don't realise the number of chemicals that are in those. We put them inside our vagina and we absorb all those toxins straight mm. in. It's such an absorbent area. And we take that straight in without any question what we're doing to our body. Yeah. Yeah. Or things like you can maybe uh, use a menstrual cup, which I sometimes use. Um, Period pants are my newfound thing. Oh, really? Amazing. (laughs) Mm. I just say I struggle with a menstrual cup sometimes because it's pressing on my bladder. I find that I'm like having to go pee like every five minutes. I'm like, this is not practical. Um, And it's finding the right thing for you. You know, and spend, yeah. if you're going to go for a menstrual cup, go and speak to somebody and have a consultation so they get the right one for you. Um, and there's a big shift now. I'm seeing many more women are sort of looking for other options. Mm. And let you know, they're just the waste that we create through yeah. sanitary wear. Um, so, and the yeah. cost as well. Like, you know, actually, if I can get a cup that I can use over and over again, I don't have to go and spend this money on these tampons every I'm single I'm convinced month. if men had periods, they'd be free on the NHS. <laughs> I won't go down that road. Well, it's, they've only just taken the VAT off, haven't they? Because yeah. you know, apparently they were a luxury item yeah. before. Yeah, and that's so, my know, definition of luxury. Yeah. One of the things I love to encourage women to do is to create like a, a period retreat box. So I, I've got a red, cotton, really beautiful box. That in there I've got a hot water bottle. I've got some lovely oils. I've got some lovely teas, cacao, raw chocolate. And, you know, sit with a book, a blanket, some cozy socks, you know, you just pull that box out and it's like, oh, retreat time. Rather than us grabbing the painkillers or something to suppress our cycle, it's about opening up and honoring it, you know, maybe having your journal and a pen in there. And when your daughters, you know, or people, young women are starting their cycles, celebrate that. You know, your children getting their ears pierced or taking them out to lunch or getting, you know, their nails and hair done or whatever it means to step into a woman, celebrating Mm. it, buying a bunch of flowers, having you just really embracing it rather than going, here's a sanctuary pad, go in the toilet, you know? Yeah, yeah, there's no crossing of thresholds anymore. Um, It just doesn't happen. We just Um, don't honour that rite of passage. No, no. Um, So 
one thing that uh, we haven't covered yet is how, if somebody wants to start doing this, like yeah. how do I start tracking? What do I use yeah. to track and what do I track? When the I'm... absolute first thing to do with, before you try and figure out where you are is to track your cycle, like you've said. Okay, so I've got a free tool you can use on my website, harmonizeyou.co.uk. You can download that and on there is a really simple tracking tool. You can have it by the side of your bed and it's got columns for food, sexual energy, um, energy in general, different parts. There's about a few columns and you just write one word in each column before you go to bed each night. It takes about 40 seconds. And then by the end of it, you've got this, you can see that, you know, even the types of clothes you're drawn to wear will change. And it's like, oh my goodness. So then once you have it and understand your own cycle, I'd always suggest trying to do it for at least two or three months to get a pattern and to see where you are. And then you can start to plot your diary around this stuff. That, but but definitely tracking, um, tracking and knowing your unique rhythm is definitely the first. Yeah. Um, I mean, I do one to ones with people to look at their unique cycle and how to put a plan in place around it. But you can, you know, track this yourself and begin to feel into where you are. Mm. Yeah. And another thing I use, I have an app called Clue. Um, which is which is free um well you can pay to upgrade but I don't I haven't done that I don't need to do it and that is just great to have it. it's on my phone I'm like what day am I like if I'm like having like my god the world's gonna end oh I'm day five okay that's just that's just day five I don't need to worry about it because it's day you know Otherwise, I'm like, what's wrong with me? There's something really wrong. Our inner dialogue is never that great for women generally anyway. But when we suddenly realise, oh, that's what it is, I'll be fine in a few days. We suddenly yeah. start going, oh, my goodness, am I going through it? So many women think they're going through perimenopause when they're not. They're going through their sickness, their cycle. And then they yeah. go, oh, that's it. I'm, start, you know, I'm starting the change early. And I say, no, you're not. You're just going through this phase. Next week, you're not going to feel like that. You'll forget, yeah. and you'll forget, but we, we, we have this dialogue where we, you know, sometimes you read the same page 10 times over and still don't know what it says. And we say, oh, what's wrong with me? Nothing's wrong with you. It actually is really right with you because yeah. next week you'll be on fire and you'll read the whole book in a day, you know? Yeah. And, you know, sometimes I thought, why am I so tired today? What is wrong with me? Why? And then I'll realise that I'm like day 25 or whatever. And that that is my clue then with an irregular cycle. Ah, tomorrow is the day. Like it's going to arrive tomorrow. And that's a really important point that you've made is actually when you're tracking your own cycle, you begin, you don't, you won't need to keep tracking it because you'll know. So if you have an irregular cycle, well, I do, I have an irregular cycle, but I know where I'm at by what I'm capable of, by what I'm feeling, yeah. you know, and it's like, oh, okay, that's fine. I know you're coming. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Which is always good because then you don't get caught out quite so much. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, amazing amazing stuff this is going to be so valuable for everybody and i will i'll put a link to my, your website and any other resources that we want to share with people in the show notes and, and share all of those um is there anything else that you particularly want to share with people about how to work with you or just any other bit of wisdom that you want to impart? No, i'd love to hear from you you know if you've got any questions or you want to learn more about it i've got lots of um free re resources on vimeo that i've put together for people to sort of take, go into a deeper dive around these things um but just spread the word you know the yeah, more yeah. women we can have these conversations with talk to your best friend about this you know have you know try and have a support partner a cycle support partner your best friend say actually let's not meet up on these days where's your cycle where's my cycle right what's the best time for us to get together and enjoy a bottle of wine together or whatever you do yeah you know, work with this and women love it you're giving them permission yes to yeah yeah, exactly. You're giving other people permission. And also I'd say, you know, I have friends and it's great when you're able to say, do you know what? I know we said we'd connect today, but my cycle's not, and I'm, I'm day 30 or I'm day 31 or whatever my friend will sometimes be, you know, my womb just feels so heavy. Can we, yeah. and you can say, yeah, absolutely. Yeah. That's fine because you're able to have those conversations with each other. We give ourselves permission not to be constantly obliged to everything in our diary. Mm. you know and work it in that way where we really start to cherish and love what we have yeah. you know instead of yeah. looking at it and going oh what if yeah. I let my inner superwoman in my maiden face fill my diary all month <laughs> and then go, oh. having my, that exact same conversation was happening on a call I was on on Sunday <laughs> where one of yeah one of my my friends was explaining that that's what she'd done and she had to start not doing that anymore yeah, yeah. 
Fantastic. And yeah, I, I totally agree. Let's start having these conversations more. Let's create a revolution around yeah. you know, this is one element of changing the patriarchal um, structures that are yeah. not benefiting us and they're not benefit, benefiting men either. No. Because um, they're absolutely. not getting the best of us. No. Um, so, yes. And yeah, so I'm so deeply grateful for you and everything you do and the fact that we, you know, we met a few, few years ago. Um, yeah, really, really Definitely. just, yeah, you really do bring so much wisdom to, to the world. So thank, thank you. Thank you. Very much I appreciate that. that. Thank you. All right. So I'm going to end there. Thank you, everybody, for watching, listening. Please do go to the um, the show notes uh, where you will find all the resources that we talked about. And if you have any um, questions for Adele, then you can contact her. I'll put all the contact details in the show notes as well. So, um, yeah, thank you very much for listening and watching. And um, I'll see you all again very soon for the next episode of the Live on Purpose show. Bye for now. <laughs>